Hey everybody, welcome to Altium Academy. I am Zach Peterson, your host and your local technical consultant for Altium. And today we're gonna to be looking at a viewer question about the skin effect. Let's go ahead and take a look. Superfan Chromatech writes, thanks for the teaser. Now please explain what are the implications and design choices required to minimize skin losses. So in a previous video, we looked at what is the skin effect and specifically what is wrong with some drawings about the skin effect resistance and the skin depth in a conductor. So now what we're gonna do is look at some of the design choices as requested that will actually reduce skin effect losses and we'll even discuss when it really matters. So let's go ahead and get started. First things first, the question is, how do we reduce skin effect losses? Well, in order to really see how we need to reduce skin effect losses, we need to revisit something here, which is actually the geometric parameters that affect the impedance of a transmission line, both for strip lines and microstrips. Okay, so first, for a microstrip, I've got my nice familiar side section and I have my microstrip here. And our relevant parameters here are, of course, the height above the substrate, we have the thickness, which is a less critical parameter, and then we have the width. Now, in a PCB that's using microstrips where you have to then worry about the skin effect, there are a couple of levers that you can pull. Generally, when you have to worry about the skin effect, you're actually worried about also maintaining impedance matching. Remember, we're dealing with high speed or high frequency signals, so this is generally gonna be a 50 ohm transmission line unless we're dealing with an alternative signaling standard that doesn't use 50 ohms. So you might be working with like DDR and operating at less than 50 ohms, depending on the drive strength of your components. In that case, you won't have 50 ohms. But in all cases where you do have a target impedance that you need to hit, you need to make sure that whatever adjustment that you make to this transmission line, you're actually going to ensure that you continue to hit this 50 ohm target or whatever other impedance target you have. So the answer here is that you can actually adjust the dimensions of the trace while ensuring you still hit this impedance target to then reduce the skin effect losses. So I'll show you how here when we get on the computer. So next, let's say that we have a strip line on an internal layer. Here we're drawing the strip line on the separation between this layer and this layer. So we have a few other geometric parameters, right? We still have the thickness here. We still have a height to the substrate. We'll call this H1. We still have another height here. We'll call this H2. And then we also have a width here we'll call it W. We still have the same set of parameters here. And the way we can reduce the skin effect losses in this case is again, to adjust the size of the trace. Also, in this case, when we're routing at frequencies or at speeds where we need to start worrying about the skin effect, we're gonna have some impedance target. So, could be 50 ohms, could be something else. As we start to adjust the geometry of this trace, whether it's the thickness or the width, or the distance to one of these two planes, we're gonna to wanna to make sure that we continue to hit this impedance target. To see how the skin effect relates to all of these different parameters, I'm gonna show you some equations, I'm gonna break them down for you, and then from those equations, we can start to see exactly what we have to do to modify our materials or our geometry in order to reduce the skin effect. So here is a slide I've shown in many a presentation, which actually breaks down all the different parameters that appear in the transmission line RLCG model. So the RLCG refers to all of these different distributed circuit parameters that appear in a transmission line impedance equation. So here in the top row, this is where the skin effect appears. And the skin effect is this little R sub S right here. So this R sub S term proportional to the square root of the angular frequency, which is just two pi times your frequency. And then here we have L, this is equal to the sum of your inductance at infinite frequency. So it's just a constant number. You can pull this out of a field solver. You can pull it out of the layer stack manager and Altium designer. And then the skin resistance right here. So the skin resistance appears in two places and it's in both of these terms in the numerator and the transmission line equation. 
And then you have these other parameters that appear here as well, but we really just wanna focus on the, the skin resistance. The skin effect contribution applies to both of these terms here, and you actually have a resistive and an inductive contribution here, and that's why you have this one plus I here. Now, in terms of the geometry, what determines the skin resistance? Well, the skin resistance is actually given by this big long formula, and we usually approximate this as I've shown below. But here in the denominator in this formula, we have this square root of the area occupied by the skin depth. So if you look at some drawings of the skin resistance, you'll see that the current is concentrated at some depth below the surface of the conductor, and there is an area associated with that. That area is right here, and that is the cross-sectional area of the trace when the skin effect occurs. So you see these other terms here in this equation. Generally, we just approximate those because the resistivity here, this rho term here, is very small. The resistivity of copper is very small, and so we can just ignore those terms because they're much smaller than one. And so we end up with this term right here on the right-hand side of this equation. So this is an approximation, but here is where you see where the geometry of the trace starts to affect the skin effect resistance. So T here is the thickness of our trace, just like I showed on the whiteboard, and then W here is the width of the trace. And so because these two terms appear in the denominator of this skin effect equation, increasing both of these will reduce the skin effect. And so the effective result here is that you are spreading the skin effect current over a larger area, and by concentrating current over a larger area, you then reduce the resistance associated with that conductor. So the other thing that contributes to the skin effect is of course copper roughness. So the effect of copper roughness is essentially to increase the skin effect. It also increases the dielectric constant, and you can read more about why that is in these two papers that I've shown here down at the bottom of the screen. So make sure to go read those papers because they're very instructive for learning about the effect of roughness on transmission lines. The real important effect in terms of the skin resistance is right here. So this K of omega, this tells you the magnitude of the roughness correction factor or how roughness affects the skin resistance as a function of frequency. So as frequency gets very large within the cannonball Hure model, this correction factor eventually doubles the value of the skin resistance. So the skin resistance will increase as frequency increases, not just due to the concentration of current in the conductor, but also due to the increase due to this roughness factor. The other lever that we can pull to try and reduce the skin resistance is to reduce the roughness here. And that means using a smoother type of copper. So make sure you go watch our types of copper video. There's a link in the description that will tell you about the different types of copper that are used in PCB materials. And you can select one of those types of different types of copper in certain laminates that are available on the market. There are some other ways to write the skin effect equation. So just note, if you're ever online, you're looking at papers or you're looking at some calculators online that can calculate this skin resistance for you. Just make sure that you note what they are actually calculating and what those differences are. So I write it like this in the top line here. Now, when you bring in the roughness correction factor, as this author does, this author actually writes the roughness correction factor like this. So one plus small k. It's equivalent to what I've done here with this big k. So just keep that in mind if you go back and read that paper. And I do encourage anyone who's interested in this to read that paper. Now, some papers and some calculators will actually write it like this on the bottom line. And you can see here in the denominator that I've got a T plus a W and then this delta here. Well, what is this delta? This delta is actually the skin effect depth. So this is the skin depth below the conductor due to the skin effect. And this depth is gonna be on the order of microns. If you're dealing with a one ounce or a half ounce copper, and let's say it's one ounce, and you've got 35 micron thickness uh, for your copper trace, that's gonna be much bigger than this value of delta here, which is gonna be about one micron. So we can ignore this delta here. And then if you ignore that, you can actually factor this back into the square root, and then you get back to the expression that I've shown here. So in my expression here, I've just ignored this delta here because it's actually very small, and you can just get to this approximation here up in the top line. 
So one thing I mentioned that you can do when the skin effect starts to take over is you can increase the width of your trace. However, the challenge here is making sure you still hit that impedance target since we're working with high speed or high frequency signals where the impedance starts to matter. So how big or how much can you increase that width? So you need to make sure that you're still within your impedance specification. So this impedance specification could be something like plus or minus, let's say 5%. So that would mean you need to be between 47.5 ohms for single-ended all the way up to 52.5 ohms, again, for single-ended. Once you add in the skin effect impedance and you have a 50 ohm line with the skin effect occurring, that might bring you up to 52 ohms, let's say. You can then widen out this trace just a little bit to get back to 50 ohms. You could widen it a little bit more if you wanted to and drop just below 50 ohms, that would bring you down to maybe 49 or 48 ohms. So that additional width here is what's going to compensate for the skin effect to get you back to 50 ohms. And then if you want to, you can get a little bit below 50 ohms. Now in one of Eric Bogatin's seminars that I saw in uh, 2019, he actually brought up something very important about reducing crosstalk. And that is that as you increase the width of this trace, you also decrease the inductance of the trace. And that is also helpful for preventing inductive crosstalk. So if you wanna learn more about the different types of crosstalk, I encourage you to check out the link that we have in the description. It's gonna to go to our types of crosstalk video, and that will outline a little bit more how the geometry of a trace affects crosstalk that it receives or generates when in relation to another trace. So the next thing that you can do in order to allow yourself to increase the width of this trace is maybe to change the stack up. So as we have discussed before in different videos, especially where we brought up microstrip impedance, is that if we have a microstrip trace and that trace is above a ground plane, and we have our transmission line here, the width required for this trace, in order for this trace to hit about a 50 ohm impedance with DK about four is gonna be about two times the height above the substrate. So this is a rough approximation, but these values are valid here. Again, for about DK equal to four. So whatever my height is, I can then multiply that by two, I get my width that's gonna hit me in the neighborhood of 50 ohms uh, impedance for this transmission line. What that means is that I could increase this thickness here because if I increase the thickness of the dielectric here that separates my trace from the ground plane, then I would be increasing the width here as well in order to maintain a 50 ohm impedance. And then by increasing that width, I'm then going to reduce the effect of the skin effect on this uh, trace and that will reduce those skin effect losses. The other thing I could do is I could of course increase the thickness here, right? So I could go from let's say 0.5 ounce per square foot copper all the way up to one, so I could double it. Now there's one more trick that I was introduced to by someone I know who used to work in telecom and who used to work on mobile phones. That trick is actually to cut out the ground plane below one layer so that now this trace gets referenced to a deeper layer right at the very end of this route in order to force yourself to use a wider trace that would still maintain the same impedance. So that little trick is something that they have done or I was told was done in some smartphones when they're routing into a connector. Is it the best idea for your PCB? I'm gonna leave that up to you to decide. All right, everybody, that's all I've got for today. Thanks for watching and sticking with me to learn more about how you can reduce skin effect losses. Just to summarize, we've got change the geometry, specifically make the trace wider, or you can actually make the trace thicker by selecting alternative materials. The other side of selecting alternative materials is you can opt for lower roughness copper in some laminates. Now, copper isn't just something that you select off the shelf and throw onto any old PCB laminate. However, some laminates from some manufacturers are available with multiple types of copper and you can then choose based on that selection. Make sure to hit that subscribe button to keep up with all of our upcoming videos. Make sure to hit that like button. And last but not least, don't forget to call your fabricator, everybody.